Welcome back to Kaidu Rider, where my parents just visited me in Japan, which means they brought me my new EBC brake pads. Now let's follow the speed limit and discuss if it was worth it. <laughs> speed limits. So, I am out on one of the most interesting roads I found because it's a hyper windy mountain road with a passing lane, which means. All this traffic is a lot less important to me than it normally would be. And just so you know, I have a fully loaded top box. So forgive me for not bringing knee sliders. As far as the brakes, are they actually that much better than stock? Yeah, absolutely. If you don't know the channel or you can't tell by what's going on here, I am on an MT-07, a 2022 MT-07. So the brakes are fine on the 2022 they're fine on all versions but they're reasonably good the real issue i was having was heat if i'm really pushing the stock brake pads once they get warm you can feel that they don't stop as well they don't stop as quick and i can barely even activate the abs if i'm trying these have an interesting thing about them they are definitely better they're definitely stronger brakes. Being the stronger brakes that they are, when you put brand new brake pads on your motorcycle, and this is true of every bike as far as I know, uh, brand new brake pads for about 100 kilometers are not as grippy as one might like. They need braking in. Now what was interesting, the first time I rode this with the new brake pads, the non-broken in brake pads were as good as the broken in stock brake pads which was a pretty intense foreshadowing of what kind of world am i going to live in once they're broken get out of the passing lane now after they're broken in they're much better they're almost as good as my stock street triple brake pads there you go passing lanes for passing my stock street triple brake pads uh, were really good or the brake system as a whole so maybe these are probably better brake pads than the street triple came with the street triple had a better braking system overall this does bridge the gap quite a bit as far as installation uh, I did not do an installation video because I forgot. I was having fun with my dad and he helped me with the installation. How do you install it? It's quite easy. You remove the calipers, pull the pins, drop out the old pads, bring in the new pads. Watch another video because I'm not going to be the one that teaches you and makes a mistake in editing or whatever, but it isn't that hard. I will say, make sure you clean the brake calipers before you put the new pads on. You want some kind of copper paste to put the, between the pads for the sake of metal on metal corrosion. These pads are not the same metal as the caliper themselves. Is this a good mod for you? It really depends on you because the braking performance on this is so much better than it was. I mean, it's almost twice as good. That's a good thing and a bad thing. What I found out is with the rear, it is very abrupt when you lock up the ABS. You can lock ever so slightly. With the front, this is an MT-07, okay? So you already knew that this bike is a wheelie machine. But what you forget is, the main thing is not just the torque. The main thing for the wheelies is the dimensions. The wheelbase is so narrow that just a quick flip of the throttle and you will bring up the front wheel even on accident. As far as those brakes go into that, if you grab a handful of front brake, even with the ABS, the rear wheel is coming up. Even with my top box, if I do a four finger full ham-fisted, let's feel these brake pads, I can lift the rear ever so slightly. Uh, so you need to keep that in mind. It's possible that Yamaha gave more okay brake pads instead of top shelf because they didn't want people going over the front end and they didn't want the bike flipping over. Uh, so the AVS is getting a lot more 
uh, how should I say, exercise than it used to. If it's worth it to you, you have to think, are you really pushing your bike hard? If so, you will be feeling the overheating of the brake pads every now and then in stock form. But if not, if you're just touring, if you're just cruising, if you're just commuting, the stock brake pads are fine, and the stock brake pads are, in my opinion, safer. They're safer because you can't lock up on accident like you might with these. And again, my ABS is on. I've done nothing to disable ABS on this bike, but I can absolutely lock my wheels up. If it's a worthwhile investment, my brake pads that I replaced were original. Uh, the bike's only got just under 8,000 kilometers. So is it worth the money to throw away relatively good, not even half used brake pads? For me, I didn't throw them away. I'm keeping them for spares just in case, because why not? Maybe I'll sell them used online. But if you are replacing your brake pads because you've used them thoroughly and they are fully worn out, in that situation, I could see an argument that says, yes, it is worth getting these instead of a new set of the stock pads. One thing I gotta say is on this MT-07, this is the newest version minus the TFT. The number of things I've changed on this bike, you do not have to change, okay? You don't have to change them. But if I was to compare this to, say, the CV650R or, say, the new Suzuki GSX, those bikes are budget. This bike is cheap. And what I mean is you save money compared to European bikes with the Suzuki and the Honda while maintaining reliability. This bike, the points where they save money on it are almost offensive. Like, the plastics never fit again for me, and I'm a professional. I do this for a living with Yamaha, or at least I did. The fact that the tank is not a tank. You get on any of the new Hondas, any of the Suzukis, the metal tank is a metal tank made of metal because it's a tank and it's a real tank. I'm personally not really okay with that. I get it because it's plastic so it saves weight and it's easier and it saves money. The tank part's okay, but then the suspension, it's just good enough. Um, the brakes are just good enough. But if you're really looking to get a proper bike and you like this engine, by the time you've invested in the suspension, in the brakes, in the everything, you've spent way more than the CV650R. You've spent way more than the GSX-8 from Suzuki. Ignoring that, like, this engine is amazing. This engine is... I mean, redline it all day, skip an oil change, and it seems to keep going. I'm not recommending you do those things, but that's been my experience. With all my Yamahas, that's been my experience. But with all my Yamahas, you know how they saved money on suspension. You know how they saved money on brakes. You know how everything is a cost-effective decision for Yamaha. Even if you get the premium MT-09 SP, the brakes are great if the bike made 20 less horsepower. I am a bit tired of Japanese manufacturers making budget bikes. We're buying it because we don't want our bike to break down for nothing when it's brand new and strand us in the middle of nowhere. We like the reliability. We love the engine. We love the efficiency of Japanese motors. But we also like good suspension. We would love cruise control as standard. Honda just made a touring bike without cruise control. Suzuki just made a touring bike without cruise control. Uh, what I have learned with this bike is that I think I'm done with mods because it's great now for what it is. But I don't think I can ever get it amazing. I don't know what the future holds, but having done these brakes and realizing how cheaply Yamaha could have just done better pads and kept the rest of the system as is. I had to buy the bike with the cheap brakes that I threw away, with the cheap suspension that I threw away. Whereas if we could just skip those parts and have the option from the factory, this could be a budget bike. And good. Getting back to the brake pads, they were very good for the way I ride. For the way I ride, they were almost necessary. But for the way 99% of people are gonna ride this bike, no, they're not necessary, but they're nice to have. Just remember, if you are not careful with these brake pads on this lightweight, short wheelbase bike, you will come over the front end 
and then the ABS is activating while your rear wheel is in the air. So keep that in mind, know what you're doing, know what you're getting into. But till next time, this has been Kaidu Rider. If you like and subscribe, I can feed my kid. Bye-bye.